What's up, guys? It's Hot Diet 7 and RCT. Today, bringing you another uh, unfiltered. Today, we're going to be dealing with Xbox One X. Uh, let me try and bring the music a little bit lower here so I can talk with you guys. Uh, first off, I need to tell you guys, uh, sorry if uh, the video was a little dark. Um, working with some settings there and some lighting issues, but let me know if you guys uh, like this better than the usual stuff, because I don't know, you know, it all uh, it's all a matter of taste in the end. But today, uh, aside from wishing you guys out there who are watching this a uh, very cool, good weekend, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I decided to do the next unfiltered, unfiltered 5 about the Xbox One X because as you guys should know it's coming out on November 7th uh, at the retail price of $499 if I'm correct and anybody who has followed my channel for quite some time know that I kind of like all systems uh, some to uh, more or lesser degree depending on the content um, I would like to add some context before beginning so you guys know where this is coming from and why I chose to do this unfiltered with the Xbox One X and not let's say PlayStation 4 Pro or something like that now before fanboys start going into a frenzy and start saying oh no, no he's the thing is that he's a Sony hater this is the thing guys uh, I'm, let's say, a little bit more than a regular gamer. I've been a gamer for a long time. I never get tired of saying it because I've been, like, from the very beginning of where the industry started taking place and form. So, everything that comes away, everything that has to do with new tech, I'm always all over it. I love new tech. I love how tech evolves. Um... That's why I got into studying computer science. That's what got me into PC gaming. Um, it's not exactly what got me into gaming, because gaming, I have to confess, it started on the console side. And yes, for those out there who hate the notion, it started basically more with Nintendo than any other company. Even though I did have my, um, you know, feet wet it with other consoles before the Nintendo 8-bit, that's where everything started taking a more uh, stable approach to gaming. Um, but basically, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. So today is all about the Xbox One X now. It's very interesting to me, this new platform from Microsoft, uh, for several reasons. Now, we are at a stage where last generation and I'm talking about Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 uh, let's say overstayed their welcome they stayed in the market for over the regular five-year period went into basically eight maybe approaching nine years on the market people were really fed up they wanted something new they wanted more technology they, they were they felt they were being limited the games were being limited even though it was a really good run at least for those two companies, um, when the PlayStation Four and the PlayStation and um, Xbox One, sorry, uh, came about, they were, I wouldn't say, in in a way they were rushed. Why they were rushed? If you, if you look back, you see that um, uh, most of the generations of the past have, in their consoles and their hardware, they have, uh, incredible. Uh, custom-made CPUs and GPUs and stuff like that from each company. Usually it's something as an architecture, very, very customized for the company coming out with a platform. For the first time, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One didn't go that route. They went for a more approachable PC architecture. So in many ways, for those of us who were in the know and kind of following tech and stuff, when we saw the unveiling of Xbox One X and PlayStation 4, we, I mean, I'm not saying everybody, but most of us really weren't impressed. We felt that even though it was nice tech, they were uh, upping a lot of the, the stuff that was limiting the previous generation. 
it wasn't a really big jump in terms of new tech. They were using parts that basically were off the shelf kind of uh, computer parts. And for somebody like me and some other guys who have who have been doing PC gaming for a while and have a nice PC rig, it really wasn't impressive hardware wise. Now we jump a little forward and we see that not even two years in, Sony is already announcing an upgrade. Another system is not PlayStation 5, but it's something for let's say premium uh, audience, somebody who's looking for more tech. To me, this was them trying to, uh, you know, shoot the first shots of not getting people backlash because they're seeing that so early in the generation, already the platform is being limited by what they had to bring forward to get the consoles out in the market. So we're starting to see this. We're starting to see that they're already starting to suffer because they didn't put these customized, you know, really advanced, they basically didn't future proof their systems as much as it's almost impossible to do so with tech evolving so quickly. So PlayStation Pro came out and, you know, Sony's still dealing with that. It's uh, selling, uh, I wouldn't say at an amazing rate, but for the same reasons that I did not feel compelled to get a PlayStation 4 when it came out, I didn't feel compelled or not yet for the PlayStation 4, um, 4 Pro. And it's not a matter of branding because, again, I did um, a purchase a PlayStation 1 and 2 and it had a ton of games for each platform and I loved those systems. It's just basically from PlayStation 3 on, it just didn't have anything that would appeal to me. Um, being a PC gamer and the type of games that I love the most. But anyways, I digress. Let's go back to the subject. Xbox One X. Now this is Microsoft answer, basically, primarily to PlayStation 4 Pro. Now they took it a step forward. Of course, they had one year to work things out because they didn't come out at the same time that Sony did. So what did they do? Well, they pretty much went ahead and streamlined everything. They took care of the major issues that were affecting the Xbox One console. Because as you guys also know, uh, Xbox One compared to the PlayStation 4 was lacking in several areas. I'm not going to go too much into that because it would make the video too long. But basically, they set themselves to make a monster of a console, something that would surpass the PlayStation Pro, of course, as a competition for them. They want that market share back, and they want to be known, you know, as the cutting edge, uh, kind of like they were looked at upon before. That crown being taken by Sony as of, you know, before releasing this console. So they come forward with the Xbox One X. They're still using, and this is where limitation number one comes up. And my grievance with these upgrades. Now, again, I go back. I have a, a very beefy PC, even though I built it around probably four years ago. It's still, I can still, and I have been playing 4K games. Uh, it has two Blu-ray players, which I don't use, by the way. Not anymore, at least. Um, it has everything that these consoles are trying to offer in a much better way because I can do it's much more flexible for me in my opinion for my money this still even though as impressive as it is as for a console it still does not entice me and why the software but we're gonna get into that a little later let me let um, show you guys exactly what this is all about well basically the first thing that you're that they started um, advertising, of course, these are basically the number, the numbers or the number game that is being thrown out as marketing. And I'm gonna give you a short explanation of each. Now, true 4K gaming. This is something that just like previous 1080p gaming, 
that was going back and forth be between 360 and PlayStation 3. Um, those systems were touted as a full HD platform console gaming, and they were competing for your dollars so you can have your 1080p gaming, which, let me tell you, was a failure because even though there were games at 1080p, almost a vast majority was still limited to 720p and maybe 900p and nowhere near 60 frames per second at least not the really advanced titles so this is something that was really not realized but they were advertising those systems as 1080p consoles now the true form of 1080p 60 frames per second were supposed to come with playstation 4 and xbox one it got there to a degree but not completely yet but now they're saying why worry about 1080p let's go for 4k people 4k you need four times at least four times the power to run because it's four times 1080p at the simplest level so true 4k gaming that's what these companies are shooting for now six teraflops that's another uh, number that's being used a lot to go back and forth the original PlayStation 4 has around 184 teraflops. The original Xbox One has one something, but they fall short. So yeah, you know, Xbox is weak, PlayStation 4 is strong. Yay. Um, CPU, a custom CPU, that's a, a 2.3, the, the speed of it. It's the same Jaguar cores that are on the PlayStation 4 Pro and the PlayStation Original and the Xbox One Original. It just sped up, customized a little bit, tweaked, but basically it's overclocking. You know, been there, done that, not really a big deal. It's not really a big difference. One terabyte storage, that's nice, but considering that if you want to do 4K gaming, those games are going to be, and it's probably taking it too far because it probably won't be four times the size, but when you consider that these textures need to be four times bigger, yeah, you can do a little compression here and there, but the, the games are going to be massive in size. So one terabyte mm, might last you for a while. It's still good. Now, 12 gigs of GDR5, that seems pretty good to me. That seems because you can never be short of uh, video memory, and I think that is going to help a lot, at least for the advancement in terms of how uh, good an artwork can look in the games and stuff like that. 326 gigabyte of memory bandwidth, that's also very good because that's basically the speed, that's basically the lane where all the, the, the information is gonna be going back and forth in terms of texture. So the bigger the number, the bigger the pipeline, and the wider it is for that information to go back and forth. So that's awesome. Another, <coughs> excuse me, another uh, key uh, term that's being used for marketing a lot is HDR. HDR has been pushed as much, I think, in the last few months as 4K on TVs and stuff like that because HDR is none other than a, a, a tech use for its high dynam dynamic range. That basically does it takes a regular picture and let's say a picture of 8 million pixels or 8 million colors or whatever and it expands upon that with some technology to give you brighter whites darker blacks it makes it look more realistic so now there even though HDR has been used in PC gaming for a long time but now this is the buzzword on the console side since it's being used also on the TV marketing side so that's something that Anybody who's competing for the tech crown needs to have as part of their tech. And of course, 4K UHD Blu-ray, which is another uh, step in evolution of the Blu-ray player. Now 4K, you know, ultra um, high definition, basically. Now, ironically, PlayStation 4 and Pro being part of the Blu-ray association, Sony does not have that in their console. But it is what it is microsoft has it with theirs so that and the other set of specs that i could leave here is basically the comparison so you guys can see where each one stands 
PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro from right to left, Xbox One, Xbox One S, don't get confused with the X and the S, S is another iteration that brings up the new Blu-ray, the UHD Blu-ray, and some other benefits, and you can start comparing the numbers and stuff. I'm going to leave that right there, so you, um, if you have any doubts, you just pause the video. I'm going to put another song here. Yeah, let me leave that there in the background. Now, since I got the specs out of the way, now I can go ahead and talk how I feel about these um, specs, how I feel about the price. The price, again, is $499.99. Um, it comes from what I've seen, because I've seen uh, various different reviews. So I'm going to try to pick everything apart and give you my verdict in the end. Now the controller, as you can see, is exactly the same controller as the Xbox One, which to me is one of the best controllers out there, I have to say. Um, DualShock 4 is really cool, but um, the Xbox One controller is, is basically the one that I use for PC gaming. It's super comfortable, um, and it's only rivaled by the now the Switch Pro controller. These are my two favorite controllers for gaming bar none and yeah I mean if it's included in the Xbox One X you know you don't mess with something that works right so I don't mind too much that didn't they, they they really didn't revolutionize with the controller because that didn't need too much messing with it would have been nice that for the premium price they would include the elite version which is still ho hovering around a hundred and something but it is what it is, we'll never know, maybe in the future they'll think as, you know, that as an option and include it in there. But, okay, what do we have here? Basically, in the end, um, I see I see no killer apps, I see no, like, amazing games for it, uh, exclusive games. Now, there's a weird thing going on, a weird dynamic that's going on with the Xbox One X. And it's that, yes, it's the most powerful console that's going to be available after November 7th. That is true. There is no doubt. It's designed amazingly well. This is the first console I've seen with a vapor chamber cooler inside, you know, and it's amazing. I've seen the board, like, from the inside, how everything is designed and packed so it doesn't overheat, you know, red ring, wink, wink, 360. And it's very streamlined. It doesn't look really boxy like the Xbox One original. Um, the dashboard and everything is looking even more streamlined and, and nice and pretty and everything. As multimedia is going to have all the usual suspects, Netflix, Hulu, and all that great stuff for people who love that. I don't really need it because I have it in my Samsung TV and I'm more than happy with what the TV provides in that aspect. So... And whatever I don't have there, I'll get on the PC. Um, what I want to get to, or the main point, before I wrap this up, is... I'm a gamer, first and foremost, and I am a tech enthusiast. So I am compelled by these two sides to get what I really, really desire. Something that's really appealing to me. Um... It's one of the main reasons why people kind of scratch their head and they go like, um, how that? Why are you so in love with the Switch then if that's not cutting edge? That's not really, really new tech. It's uh, outdated in many ways compared to PC gaming that you do. Uh, ah, here's the big difference. In that case, even though the tech is not absolutely cutting edge, it's taking tech, present tech, and putting it out there in innovative ways so the customer or the, the gamer can benefit from having something and you know getting value out of it and of course that with the first party uh, titles the amazing games you remember games gamer games so yeah I am really happy with that but this video is not about the switch about the Xbox One X now, there's several series that I really love from Xbox, Gears of War, 
Halo and some others. Forza, I love driving games. They're really, really good ones. And Forza to me is the best. That being said, many of these games I am going to be able to play on the PC. So you see, the reasons for me to get the console, this console, is less and less because of that. You know, I have still more options on the PC side of things. That does not mean that it's not worth the price. Taking it by the price, the $499 ticket price on this, it is a steal because, and now I'm getting a whole bunch of messages. Sorry about that. Um, the great thing is that for that money, you are getting good value. This is undoubtedly tech that's more than worth it because to pack all of this technology into one little box and sell it comparatively to that I say something like this uh, steam box this is a much better deal you will get something that's focused on one architecture extremes amount of power because I already read that those six teraflops of, of power you're not gonna be seeing that for now because almost everything that it does is doing with a very fraction of that so you're going to have something that's going to last for a long time. I don't know if it's going to survive the next generation with PlayStation 5 and Xbox 2. I don't know. But for now, those 500 bucks are well spent if this is your thing and you're not doing PC gaming already. Now, in terms of... Let's say if uh, you have uh, disposable income, then this video is not for you. I should have started by with that. I'm sorry, but yeah, if you have money to spend and you want something new, you're gonna go ahead and grab it, and you should, you know, go ahead and splurge and 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 test it out and try it out, and who knows. If there's one redeeming thing about this for me personally, that would make me pick this up, and you better listen very good. To me, and it's gonna sound weird, the Xbox One X will be the best. <laughs> wait for it the best Xbox brand emulator out there and let me explain the Xbox one Xbox one X is going to be able to play your 360 your Xbox one and the original Xbox titles all in one place and most of those titles from those platforms are going to be played in 4k with added benefits like more effects um, better frame rate a lot of the titles reaching those 60 frames per second that they promise um, all of them even though it might not go all the way up there but it's going to receive all of the games are going to receive some kind of benefit so when you compare this to let's say in my case a PC this is a steal because you know how much I love abomination so having a platform being able to have all of this backward compatibility and not only having the backward compatibility but having the ability to play those games in an improved way that is a big plus with this and one that carries a really big advantage over the playstation 4 pro so that to me right now as of right now uh what date is today november 5th that to me is the main advantage of the Xbox One X going into its launch. Now, bear in mind, the only reason why I don't put it a bit higher in, let's say, um, priorities in uh, go ahead and buy, rush and buy it, is because there is no exclusive games as of now launching with the title, with the, with the console, I'm sorry. So there's like no new Halo, no new Gears of War. You will be able to play Gears of War 4 with 4K and new textures and stuff like that. Halo 5, all of these games that you already played on Xbox One, but in 4K or improved in many ways. So if that is your thing and that is what you're looking for, please go ahead and buy it. It's an excellent console from what I've seen so far. And that basically, that's uh, that's it. That's uh, all I can say about this for now because, to be honest, um, there's not much else. 
that is basically it. I hope you enjoy uh, me giving you at least my two cents on the whole Xbox One X um, console and its launch coming up in November 7th at $499. Um, for those of you who are going to get it, please uh, leave your comments uh, down below in the, in the video. Let me know how is, you, how is your experience, of course, after the 7th. And let me know what games, either from the present uh, generation or the generations past, you're going to be enjoying most on this console. And who knows, maybe later on, uh, the beginning of next year, I'll probably get one. But I'm not really sure of it right now. There's so many games right now coming out, uh, both for PC and Switch, um, that I'm going to have my hands tied. And time, of course, is a limitation. But to everybody out there who's planning on getting one or already has one pre-ordered, I hope you enjoy your console. It's a pretty badass one. And I'll see you guys next time. Please like and subscribe and take care, guys.